All right, dear students, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are solving manufacturing accounts for today. What is manufacturing accounts? We have already discussed the concepts. And manufacturing accounts are made by factories who are producing goods. And I gave you the example of Apple factory who is making manufacturing iPhones or iPads. So we need to find out that how much it cost Apple to produce iPhones this year. Okay. So let me read the question for you guys. Asteric PLC, a manufacturing company, has extracted the following balances from its books of account for the year ending 30th April 2012. Now, if the year is being ending on 30th April, that after April comes 1st May, and the year must have been started on 1st May 2011, as we can see here. Revenue means sales. Okay, sales are written and not in manufacturing account, but instead in income statement. Then we have purchase of raw material. We have bought raw material worth this. We have carriage inward. Carriage means transportation costs. And now there are two types of carriage. One is inward and one is outward. So inward is usually for raw material unless it's written clearly that we are also buying some of the goods. And in that case, carriage inward can also be for finished goods. So we have discussed earlier, we have three types of inventory here. We have raw material, we have work in progress, and then we have finished goods. Okay. We have carriage inward, then carriage outward, then we have direct labor. Direct labor means factory wages. Uh, direct labor also known as factory wages. Then we have factory overheads. Overheads are all indirect costs. We have office overheads as well. That will be uh, recorded in an income statement. Right now, we are not focusing on the income statement. We are just focusing on the manufacturing account that is being made by the factory. Now, the first requirement, part A. So, I'm not doing the entire requirement. I'm just doing the manufacturing account part. Okay. Uh, I need to prepare manufacturing account. And let us see how can we prepare this manufacturing account. So, first of all, beta, it's better to make the format first. And we'll be starting with direct raw material. Okay, direct material is the material that is primary in nature and that is used in uh, mo most of the quantity. This material is being used to make the product and the material that is traceable in making the product as to how much material we are using it. So we can calculate it by starting with opening inventory. This is the material that we had when this year started and this was the material that was left over of the previous year and we are not uh, going to... Uh, dispose of this material instead if it's uh, uh, is in good uh, quality we'll be still using it in the next year after opening inventory we need to add purchase and the purchase also relates to the material then we have purchase return beta if there are any purchase return we need to deduct that purchase return should also be for raw material now instead of writing return outward we are going to write purchase return only sales return and purchase return then we need to add carriage inwards. Carriage inwards is the transportation cost being incurred by Apple uh, to transport the raw material into the Apple factory. Okay. Then we have a closing inventory. This is the material that is left over. And again, we are not going to throw off this material. Instead, we are going to use it in the uh, on the first day of the next accounting period. Okay. So after adding and subtracting all of these, we are going to get cost of raw material consumed. Now, this format is important, but you should follow this exact format if you want to earn good marks in the exam. And if you skip some headings and all these, uh, you won't be getting full marks. Then after raw material, we have direct labor because if we keep the all the ingredients, uh, all of the components to make an iPhone in a single uh, room and no one is going to make this, then it will not be manufactured automatically, okay? So any labor must be there who, is, who will be working on the machines or manually assembling these iPhones. Uh, it will be known as direct labor or also known as factory wages. Uh, after direct material, direct labor, we have third direct component that is direct expenses. But if we add up all of the direct cost, direct expense, another name for direct expense would be royalty. So for example, that uh, you must have heard the news that Apple is now being assembled in India. Okay, Apple has uh, moved uh, one of the major factories into India, uh, has moved or have been in the process of moving. So if Apple India is making the iPhones now, so Apple India must pay royalty to Apple Global, okay, or Apple uh, based in US. Okay, so this is known as royalty. Royalty is when using you are using someone else's brand name or someone else's formula 
okay or the process so they are going to charge you for the name and this is known as royalty so if you add a bit of all of the direct expense the sum of all direct cost would be known as prime cost prime cost is sum of all direct cost is known as prime cost after direct cost after direct cost uh, we have after prime cost we have other some things as well such as overheads production overhead production overhead or factory overhead or overhead means beta indirect cost sum of all direct cost is known as prime cost and sum of all indirect cost is known as factory overheads now in the factory we do not only uh, incur direct cost but instead indirect cost as well now we heard the difference uh, we listened we learned the difference between the two in the previous classes when we were uh, studying cost classification that direct costs are the costs that can be easily traced to the product and indirect costs are the costs that cannot be easily traced or identified to the product and in the end we are going to adjust for work in progress and work in progress is that we have started making iPhones and we have made it uh, for example 10 percent or 90 percent of the iPhone is complete but still 100 percent has not yet been completed so opening work in progress beta needs to be added and closing work in progress need to be subtracted so why are we subtracting the closing because uh, it's not necessary that the end of the year all of the iPhones are 100% uh, manufactured okay maybe there's some still some of the work is left on the iPhones so the work that is left and the units that are not yet completed shouldn't be charged this year instead they will be uh, carried forward to the next year and the completed in the next accounting period so therefore we are closing the uh, detecting the closing work in progress and while we adding the opening work in progress so similarly the way that in this year all of the iPhones were not complete similar must have happened in the last year okay so in the last year again uh, the iPhones that were incomplete we are going to complete these iPhones uh, in this particular year okay so opening work in progress needs to be added and closing need to be subtracted and better the final value would be production cost or manufacturing cost this will be the final value production cost or manufacturing cost so we'll be starting with opening inventory for what opening inventory for raw material now let us uh, see what uh, adjustments do we have uh, opening inventory is always given in the list and closing inventory is always given in the notes okay so opening inventory for raw material we want right now opening inventory is 140 and it's not 140 dollar it is 140 thousand why because three zeros are given here so opening inventory is 140 thousand so we are going to write 140 thousand instead of 140 so then we have purchase of raw material have you bought any new raw material yes we have bought new raw material in this year word 14 lakh for 50 thousand 1450 thousand is purchase of raw material then do we have any purchase returns better we do not have any purchase return i cannot find any so we can just put a dash in front of that then we have carriage inwards carriage can be of raw material or finished goods so most of the time carriage is only for raw material because we are only purchasing raw material and we aren't purchasing any finished products okay so what uh, can be the reason for purchasing finished goods if we are apple factory why do we buy something from outside uh, that is finished goods uh, there can be an example better that we have an apple store and in that apple store we have all of the goods related to apple uh, but there can be a situation that some of our customers who have iPhones and they also have Android phones and they are asking for Android data cables or Android chargers so instead of just uh, uh, refusing customers on the spot that we do not have any Android goods so Apple store has decided that why not buy some of the good quality Apple uh, sorry Android accessories as well so that our customers are not turned back when they are uh, come to our Apple store so the purchase of finished goods would be for those android products that apple doesn't manufacture obviously but we are going to buy it from some other suppliers and that would be purchase of finished goods and that can be a scenario that for that particular purchase of finished goods we have carriage inwards but uh, if the carriage inwards lead to the finished goods then the examiner must would tell you and if the examiner examiner doesn't mentions anything so we would assume that carriage is always relating to what carriage is always relating to raw material then we have better closing inventory for raw material let's see do we have any closing inventory 
closing inventory would always be given in the notes as you can see inventory at 30th april it would be closing and closing inventory for raw material is how much it's 235000 okay closing inventory of raw material so if we add opening and purchase and add carriage inverts as well and if we deduct closing inventory because it is not yet used we will be getting the answer cost of raw material consumed so it you will get one mark in the exam just to write this label uh, cost of raw material consumed it is important so this means the iPhones that we manufactured this year contain total uh, component cost of how much? 14,85,000. Then uh, there would be labor uh, working in the Apple factory who is assembling these iPhones. And what is the labor cost? Uh, it would be termed as direct labor or factory wages or production wages. Okay, so it means the same thing. Direct labor is 16,75,000. And we also need to see are there any adjustments uh, relating to accrued or prepaid, uh, there aren't any adjustments in labor, but there are some in factory overhead. So the direct labor would be written uh, immediately 16,75,000 as it is. So do we have direct expense or royalty type of thing? Uh, the, the, there are only two words that examiner use. One is royalty and one is direct expense. And if the examiner says only the words such as factory expense, we would assume that they are indirect expense and they would not be termed as uh, uh, direct uh, expense. Instead, they would be termed as factory overhead. Okay, but we do not have any direct expenses here. If we add up all of the direct cost, direct material, direct labor, direct expense, it would be termed as prime cost. So what is prime cost? Beta prime cost is sum of all indirect costs. Now in the factory, do we have only direct costs or there are some indirect costs as well? There can be many indirect costs of the factory such as rent of the Apple factory and the supervisor's salary and the insurance of the factory and the depreciation. So let us see what are the indirect costs such as overheads. Now the carriage outward relates to the ready iPhones and this would be recorded in the income statement because carriage outward always relates to finished goods, ready iPhones and not for the raw material okay then we have factory overhead okay any costs that are indirect known as overhead and only overhead relating to factory would be charged here now as we can see we have uh, paid overhead 13,50,000 and in node 1 as we can see there is uh, accrued as well so accrued means uh, we have incurred these costs but we haven't yet paid these costs so these costs would still needs to be paid and we need to add factory overhead okay so we have used the mnemonic previously APPM accrued plus and prepaid minus so the accrued needs to be added at the end of the year so the factory overhead that we have paid we need to add ones that are still not paid these are accrued or outstanding or unpaid or due or owing it means the same thing now do we have any other things relating to factory so anything relating to office or admin or selling and marketing would not be charged here because we are just uh, now worried for apple factory and any for uh, any expenses relating to store apple store or office or admin or selling or marketing would need not be charged here it will be charged in the income statement so we are going to skip office over it for now depreciation can be charged here and the total depreciation is how much 150,000 beta and this is to be split means we need to divide between factory and office in the ratio of two ratio one now as you can see it's written factory first and office afterwards so therefore the two ratios out of three would be relating to factory and one ratio out of three would be for the office so if we add up both two plus one means three so out of these three ratios two third of the uh, depreciation relates to the factory so i'm going to apportion this 150,000 into two upon three so the two upon three of the total depreciation is relating to the factory and one one third of the depreciation relates to the office thank you yeah. so beta if we add up all of the costs relating to prime cost and then the overheads if we add up all of these now uh, this value uh, doesn't have any name this is no name figure but still we need to write uh, this value because sometimes examiner give one mark for this as well and lastly beta we have work in progress work in progress means incomplete goods first of all we have opening work in progress this means at the start of the year this much goods were incomplete so we uh, need to complete these iphones this year therefore we adding up this cost and uh, at the end of the year there can still be some work that is incomplete and as we can see incomplete goods have increased uh, from 165 to 320 now 
Now, as we, uh, we can do the net for both of these, uh, we need to subtract the closing from the opening. And as we can see, closing is more than opening. So therefore, the net value would be negative. Now, this is important. You, you need to write this net value as well because sometimes students write these both opening and closing in the second column and do not uh, calculate this difference between opening and closing and examiner give one mark for this value as well 155 so if you do not uh, write 155 and you just write both of these values although the final answer would be the same but you will be miss one mark for this so from this value no name figure uh, if, the, if the net value is negative we need to deduct that and if the net value was positive we need to add up that and final answer is production cost or manufacturing cost. Okay. So the production or manufacturing cost value is 4525. Uh, so there is one more adjustment here in uh, your syllabus and that is profit for factory. So sometimes what happens that uh, factory made all of the goods and factory doesn't charge any profit because factory is a cost center and factory pass on these costs to the outlet and it is outlet who charge 100% of the profit. But that's not the case here uh, in your syllabus. What happens that factory also charge some of the profit and in note four it's written completed production is transferred at a markup of cost on 20%. Now better what is a markup? Markup is a percentage that is being applied on what? On cost and the answer would be profit okay so it would be factory profit so what happens the phones that cost apple factory 45 lakh 25 thousand this year 4.5 million so apple factory would also going to charge some profit from their own outlet and they'll be charging 20 percent profit okay so we need to apply 20 percent to the manufacturing cost and this would be nine zero five thousand so nine hundred and five thousand profit would be charged from the factory to the outlet and the amount that uh, outlet have to pay for this goods is 54 lakh 30 thousand and this will be basically the purchase price of the outlet so factory have decided not to give all of the products cost to cost to our outlet but instead uh, let us earn some profit uh, first of all in the factory as well and then outlet can earn their profit themselves okay beta so this is how we prepare manufacturing account